Hi, I'm Jennifer with Martingale, and today I have a trunk show of quilts from the book Red and White Quilts 2. If you love red and white quilts like I love red and white quilts, you're going to adore this collection. So I have my celebrity guest arm holder over to this side, and she's going to help hold it up, but not show on camera. This first quilt is by Susan Aki, and it is called Unchained Melody. I adore this quilt. It is a scrappy mix of red prints. It has sort of an Irish chain look to it. What I love about Susan Aki's quilts is they always look harder than they are. So this one, believe it or not, is 64 straight set blocks with a skinny sashing. There's nothing set on point here. There's no diagonals. You can do it. So that's from Susan Aki. If you have a lot of red and white in your collection of fabrics, chances are you've been attracted to some antique quilts in your day. And this is from the collection of Jody Sanders. And Jody is the editor of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. And she was gracious enough to loan us this antique quilt because so many classic quilt patterns were made in two colors, red and white. And this is Jacob's Ladder. It's also known as the Going to Chicago block or uh, Susie's Fancy or Golden Stairs. It comes by a lot of names, but it is fantastic. It was all hand quilted and uh, solids. I just love it. And we share with you all the tips for how to make it using today's methods. This next one I think is aptly named. It's called Fireworks by Jessica Dayon. And it is an absolute sparkler. What I love about it is often when we ask designers to participate in a compilation book like this, we talk about making a red and white quilt and we get white quilts with red uh, motifs on them. But Jessica thought in reverse and made a gorgeous red quilt with white stars and it really is the fireworks show. Ooh, ah, love it. Okay. <clears throat> This one is by Australian designer Helen Stubings, and it is called Tickety Boo. And I had to look that up when uh, her name came in for it because I thought it was so cute. Um, and I'm like, what is Tickety Boo? I'm chuffed. That's another favorite expression the Australians use that I love. But um, Tickety Boo is everything's fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's good. And everything is good about this. If you have done an applique quilt before and are a little intimidated maybe by something that looks like a medallion or a whole cloth quilt the way that helen put this together is block by block so it's all in manageable pieces and then you put it together so an easier way to applique and she's got great tips so that's from helen stubings next up i bet you'll have all the heart eyes for this one we did this is from Jerry Robinson and it's called String of Hearts and you can see these hearts go all the way down here. I think this would make a fabulous gift as a wedding gift for someone. Um, the nice thing is it is all pieced, not a hint of applique here even for all these different hearts and heart shapes. So from Jerry Robinson, String of Hearts. Now the next designer does things two ways, either little itty bitty or super big. Can you guess who it is? Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings. And this gorgeous quilt is called Ruby Stars. And I'm going to drop it down just a little bit so you can see these little tiny uh, triangle squares. As with many of Lisa's quilts, she made it using one inch finished uh, triangle squares that she uses her papers for, her triangle papers, so that you can get them perfect every single time. There's only nine blocks only nine stars in this quilt so that's it you guys can have it done quick as a wink and it's king size so how fabulous is that okay how about this beauty which is feather your nest from debbie roberts and those are hen and chickens blocks and Debbie always does a fabulous job of adding a little bit of applique. She does needle turn. You could use whatever your favorite method is, but um, they are absolutely gorgeous. She uses kind of a mix of a little bit of creamier backgrounds, a lot of different reds. I think it's just a gorgeous quilt. Whether you use it as a wall hanging or a throw, it is terrific. All right, this one is very familiar. 
and it is called Oh My Stars. And this quilt actually is a quilt that belongs to me. Um, I rescued this top from an antique shop that I was in and I thought to myself, well, um, somebody's got to rescue it, it might as well be me. And I love it. What is the most fun to me about how this quilt is made is what you see when you look at it are the stars, but what it really is is nine patch blocks and the stars are formed by the sashing. So it's an incredible um, fun antique quilt and one that I think you would have fun making. Oh my stars. I can't wait to hang that up at my house for Christmas. All right. This is Double Take, and it is a big one. This is from Lisa Alexander, and it's double hourglass blocks that sort of do double duty and create also uh, these little churn dash blocks in the sashing to have two designs in one. Phenomenal. This is my arm workout for today. Some of you might be familiar with Nancy Martin. She was the original uh, owner and founder of Martingale Publishing. And Nancy Martin made this beautiful quilt called This and That. So you may see one of two things. You might either see some faceted bow ties when you look at this quilt top, or you might see a spinning pinwheel pattern. Either way, it's a fabulous mix of scrappy reds and whites and creams. Nancy's whole house, uh, she has all kinds of red and white. She's always been a fan of red and white, and she was a natural fit to contribute to this book. Back in 2011, there was a red and white quilt exhibit in New York City that a woman named Joanna Rose hosted with more than 650 red and white quilts in it. And it spurred a lot of attention and interest in this century from people who wanted to make red and white quilts. And Sherry McConnell was one of those. And so she made this quilt called Tribute um, as a tribute to that exhibit. And her assortments of brighter reds and white backgrounds, a really sparkly tribute by Sherry McConnell. This quilt is by Pat Sloan, and it is called Soul Sister. And it features two different kinds of blocks, checkerboard blocks and star blocks. Pat is a genius when it comes to getting more bang for your buck, and so she's got lots of fun tips and tricks. One of them is using uh, striped fabrics to make things look more complicated than they are. She's also got some strip, strip piecing methods that she uses. Um, that help and I just love this combination. It's a really stunning quilt and her use of the um, setting triangles on the edge here really adds to the overall effect of the design. Soul Sister by Pat Sloan. Here's another antique quilt which just is been well loved in its day but this is from collector Jody Sanders again from American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine, and it's called Vintage Rolling Stones. And this is another block that has lots of names. It was called Squirrel in a Cage or Mrs. Miller's Favorite. I'm not sure how Mrs. Miller got the corner on that block name, but she did, or Johnny Round the Corner. It's a great uh, vintage block and a lot of fun patterns emerge from it where it's really just squares and triangles setting this together. Um, so we've given you instructions on how to recreate that for today and I think you'll love it. And last but not least, a spectacular medallion quilt by Karen Stiles, also from Australia. And it is a medallion style quilt, lots of borders. If you're ever concerned about making a medallion style quilt and you think that, um, you might not have your piecing just exactly on and you're worried about making it fit. There are lots of spacer borders in between uh, the blocks that go on here that will allow you to accommodate for a little difference in sewing, shall we say, um, and help you be successful in making a quilt like this. So this beauty of all sorts of spectacular stars and checkerboards is by Karen Stiles. 
All of these quilt patterns are available in red and white quilts too, available at shopmartingale.com or wherever you buy books. I hope you've enjoyed our trunk show and I hope you enjoy making these patterns yourself.